Okay, so I'm going to walk through making a piston. At the very end of this, we will go through the IDW drawing file Inventor has. And let's see, so for this piston, we'll start out with just a um, four inch by two inch. This is going to actually be just half of the diameter. Pistons come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes for tractors and semi trucks to cars, motorcycles. So if you have something that you want to design your own engine for, that's fine. Or if you want to use these dimensions, you can. And all of these dimensions are also in the notes. So if you don't want to try and follow along really quickly, there are screenshots of these in the notes that have all of the little dimensions in them. So what we're doing here, we're going to use the revolve command after this little shape is created. Up at the top, this is the combustion chamber. There's actually quite a lot that goes into the shape of the combustion chamber. When you come up to that top dead center, how much of the fuel is pushed out and pulled in and that the shape and size of that. If you know what a hemi is, hemisphere, a hemi has a hemispherical kind of top to the combustion chamber. So you can think about what kind of intake and exhaust valves are going to be up there and how those will sit up there but I'm just making something super simple. Okay up here at the corner this is where the compression rings are going to go. The piston does not actually touch the walls of your engine block. The, the contact is made by these little compression rings and that's actually where all the heat transfer takes place, all the friction happens. So these teeny little compression rings that, that fit in here, there's actually quite a lot of energy loss that happens with these things. And thinking through redesigning those little rings, you could maybe get a little bit better energy efficiency. You have an oil ring also in here that's a little bit large. Maybe I should have put, usually engines you'll get maybe three compression rings. Okay, so there is a cross section. This is a very simple one. And again, think through, this is kind of a neat thing. You'll see engines in your thermodynamics class and a couple different classes. So as you're making this thing, think about how it could be created a little bit more energy efficient as you go along. Okay, we'll just slice into here. The next little section, and you should be kind of recording the dimensions you're using as you go along so that as you create the next part, each part will have to fit snugly with one another. So this is where the wrist pin is going to go that's going to lead to our connecting rod that connects all the way down to the crankshaft. So we'll have an inch diameter wrist pin that shoots through here. Remember, you can have the option of that kind of double-sided extrude for inventor that's kind of nice. Going to create a plane that's offset from the center. Some pistons have this feature, some don't. It's a little bit easier for the assembly later on if you give it a nice flat side here. Just a little bit easier to, to get the wrist pin and everything lined up. You also want the piston to be lightweight. That's another kind of energy efficient thing. You don't want some big, heavy, bulky thing. You want to move the car, not the individual pieces of the engine around. So any chunk of material that you can kind of take off of this thing is going to lighten it up a little bit and make it a little bit more energy efficient. So I'm just going to pop the edge in half an inch here. Make sure that's a hole and not a solid. And then you turn off the visibility of that working plane we created. I'll reach up and use the mirror command. Remember you can look at those descriptions if you forget how any of those tools work. And I'll grab that feature right out of the tree there on the left hand side. So there's a mirror command and we have just a little bit of material popped out of each side of it. Okay, let's go ahead and use the shell command and I'm going to make the shell thickness that's a similar thickness to what we used for the compression rings up there. Remove that bottom face and you can see in here we need to chop through 
that hole for the wrist pin. This is going to be where that connecting rod reaches up inside of there to connect with the piston. So I'm going to grab a working plane just right through the center of this thing again. View, slice graphics, and this dimension right here, this will be the thickness of our connecting rod. So I'm going to just make a center line and then I'll use this center rectangle and it doesn't matter how high it is just so long as we can cut through that tube in there. I'm going to make it 1.5 inches deep though. Okay so extrude that out and this is in the future where our connecting rod is going to reach up inside of there into our piston. Okay, so there we go. Pretty simple. Think of if there's a better design that you'd like to use on this, that would be fine. Yeah, let's just give that um, connecting rod a little bit more room to move around in too. So I'm just going to slice a hole in the side. If any of you work at an um, auto place and have access to, to see some pistons, these guys are actually kind of hard to just search and find some good dimensions for on the internet because this is sort of intellectual property and stuff. So to get these things, I actually used to have a really nice collection of different pistons that were now lost in the flood, unfortunately. But yeah, if you ever have taken an engine apart, save a few of these pieces because it's kind of interesting to compare the different makes and models of them and and see these guys. Okay, we want to strengthen those up again with a fillet edge and we can even come up here to the <coughs> materials and the engines that used to be all steel but now more and more are making them out of aluminum just because aluminum is such a nice lightweight material and it's it works pretty well. Okay so there is a piston but the real point of this video was to show you the IDW. So you can come into the drawings if you click on new that's you can make sure you're getting one for the inch unit and make sure you're doing the IDW and not the DWG file. So this is the default that it opens up with. The page size is horribly wrong. I'm going to right click, edit sheet, and we want just a standard A piece of paper. We're not going to be putting this on some huge plotter or something. It defaults to its own border and title block. I'm going to right click and go ahead and just delete those out of there and show you how to make your own borders and your own title block. So up here under Drawing Resources, there's a couple of default borders that you could grab, or if you go up and right click on border, there's a couple options for you. You can come in and just draw your own border so you can see it opens up the sketching tools and you can just draw rectangles, use the offset command, so whatever your printer is able to, to print. You can set your borders and then when you finish your sketch it asks you to give it a name. Now remember what name you give it because that is now going to show up under your drawing resources and you can right click on it and say insert it into your sheet and have some generic border show up. So I'm going to delete this one out of here and show you a better way, but just know that you can totally make your own customized border. So here we go. I'm going to use their zone border. So for this little guy, you get extra options if you hit these arrows over here. And this is more for like the large plotter areas. So you can say go to square C3 or something. So it's going to label around the edge now four zones and it's going to be A, B, C, D on one side and 1, 2, 3, 4 numeric on the other side. And we can also set the um, margin sizes down here. So lots of little customizations you can do. This is still just a drawing object. So after it automatically creates it for you, you can come in here and change anything around that you want to. So again, just save the name of it and then we can add this into our sheet by just right clicking and saying insert. Okay so there is our border and we've inserted into 
and you can see those one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, and that is kind of good to communicate with people. You can say, oh, it's in zone D3 or something, and it's just easier to find things. Okay, so the title blocks. It has default blocks, or you can come in here and draw your own. So just like we did in AutoCAD, you start out by drawing regular old rectangles, and and I'll go ahead and and make one of these two. There's a couple of neat extra features in Inventor though called eye properties. So instead of just putting text in, we're going to have some fields that Inventor will automatically populate for us with things like the material that we've chosen or the volume of our part. So it has some, some neat little information that's stored that can automatically fill in what's in our title block. Okay, so here we go. I'm just making some rectangles here. It's two inches by 0.375 inches, and we can put a little logo block. If you want to design your own logo, that's that's kind of neat, especially as you're, you're building your portfolio for yourself that you can bring to job resumes. And if you know CAD, they're... There, you can always find a job if you're good at CAD. Okay, so here we go. You can insert an image. You just draw a box of where you want that image to go and grab a snapshot. So there's the good old Lone Star star that you can put in there. But yeah, design any kind of a logo that you want. I'm going to get rid of our dimensions here. Just They're a little bit cluttery. And then I will show you a few things. So the first um, text fields I'm going to put in just random text, just like we did in AutoCAD. So I'm making the text box size the same as that rectangle we drew, and I'll center and center. And this is where you can fill in your name or your part name, your sheet, the date, whatever you want. So again, just text and click and you're dragging it. You're holding down that left mouse button until you're done making that rectangle and you've got lots of different font options up there so you can change your font size, make it bold, italics, anything you want. Okay, this next field I'm going to show you some of the other things that we can have Inventor auto populate for us. And you'll want to look through all of these options yourself. So here we have drawing properties, and it's going to automatically import things like the author of who owns the computer you are working with. Make sure to click this little insert button. So here's the file name, and you should be using good description, descriptive file names on everything you do. Let's put the, the scale in here, and that will automatically populate when you place your views, so you won't have to type it in. You can put things like if you have what material it's made out of. You can put that in there. Make sure to get that centered on there. So have some fun and look through all of the information that is coming in with those parts before we do what's equivalent to the view base command. But lots of different things in here. So there's, I don't know, let's go down to the the physical properties. You can put the volume of the thing. So that's if you want to know how much material you're using. That's kind of an interesting thing to to see, right? So it'll automatically populate that for us when we decide what to put on our sheet. Let me go ahead. I'm going to, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and delete out this 1304 and I'll show you one other option that you have here. If you can't find what you need in that auto populate, what you can do is say prompted entry. And this, it'll ask you to fill in your class name when you first put a view. So you can create your own fields too that will assign inventor properties. Okay, so once again, save your title block and it will now show up under your drawing resources. 
Now that we're going to insert something, there's the prompted entry. See, it says, please enter your class name. So you can enter it, and it automatically populates that into your title block. So kind of nice. Here we go, base view. Now, I already had that piston up, or you can look through your files to find it. You can choose whatever view you want when you're placing it and just click and drag it around the screen very easily. You can also change your scale on this entry sheet. Okay, so there's the base view. Projected view, just click and click. So very similar to the view base command in AutoCAD. Once you're done, right click, say create. And again, when you're at the end of this thing, you can click and drag around. If you grab at the edge of it, you can move it a little bit better. That, that initial view that you projected everything off of, that will kind of control the positions of everything. You've got sectional views on here. Again, just draw a line through what you want to create a sectional view of and then right click, continue, and pull it down. So there's our sectional views, very nice. And for that text, yeah, so at any point, and try and get everything on there spaced well before you add dimensions. So kind of drag it around. Here's the detail view, this is kind of nice. So you can zoom in on something so this will give it just a larger scale, and you've got a couple different options for a circular view, a rectangular view, and just click on the center of what you're interested in. So let's say we want to zoom in on where these compression rings are going to be, just so that we can have a better way to dimension those little detailed parts. So that's a nice little thing to do. Okay, if you come up here to annotate, there's all of your dimensioning tools. Now the dimensioning tools are pretty nice. It will detect what you're clicking on. So it will automatically dimension lines and diameters and circles. You've got a whole bunch of options for changing precisions and adding boxes and tolerances and all kinds of stuff in there as you place it. So go around and play in the annotate tab and your view tab and I'm hoping you'll find Inventor to be very intuitive and easy to learn, and you'll really love it after struggling with AutoCAD. Okay, have fun with it.